Welcome to example number 11. We have a, a situation where we have two parallel straight wires, very, very long. They're separated by a distance of 0 0.065 meters. And we're looking at the first uh, wire having a current I1 of 15 amps. And the second wire over here, I2, is given as 7 amps. And we're also told that we're looking at a length of this wire of 1.5 meters. So this question is really about the interaction force between these two long straight parallel current carrying conductors. In part A we're asking what would happen, uh, what would be the magnitude of the force and direction uh, when the two wires have currents going in the opposite direction. And then in part B, we're asking for what would it be if they were in the same direction, which is shown here in the picture. So let's answer part B first. So more specifically, we're asked to find what is uh, the force that's going to act on wire 2 due to wire 1's interaction with it. You see, wire 1 is going to generate its own magnetic field around it. And the magnetic field for wire 1 is already shown in these nice circular fashion around here. How do we know what direction the magnetic field is around this wire 1? Which is already given here. We're going to label this as B1. But how do we know that? Well, hopefully you're thinking of the right-hand rule, where you point your thumb in the direction of the current, and your fingers will now curl around the wire in the direction of the magnetic field lines. So you can see over here in this fashion. That means that the magnetic field lines are entering the page on this side. So I'll draw a bunch of X's going over here. And then they would be coming out of the screen or out of the page over here. So you can see that the magnetic field lines are going around and into the page on the right side of the wire and out of the page on the left side of the wire. And as you get further away, the magnetic field will get weaker. Why? Well, the magnetic field strength is defined as mu naught times I1 all over 2 pi r. And r is the distance from the wire. So if you go right to this location, then it'll be gonna, it's going to be 0 0.065. But if you go further out here, for example, then the r will be larger and you'll have this weaker magnetic field. So then the next question I have is what is the force that would be acting on this current carrying wire by being in wire 1's magnetic field? Well the, the force on wire 2 would be given by the following expression. The current of wire 2 times the length that we're looking at multiply by the magnetic field of the wire that is creating the field. So that would be B1, which we're now going to substitute into this expression. Furthermore, we have also a sign of the angle between the field, which is going into the screen, and then the current, which is going straight up. So you got straight up along the screen and then going straight in. And hopefully you're thinking, oh, that's a 90 degree angle. So that's going to cancel out there. So now substituting this expression in, we have F2 equals I2 times L times mu naught I1 all over 2 pi R. And R would represent the distance from wire 1 to wire 2 because we're looking at the strength of the field at that location. And that's the distance between the two wires. So at this point, we can now substitute to find the magnitude of the force on wire 2. There you go, substituting all the values in, so I can do some cancellations as well here. And I'll get a force of F2 equals 4.85 times 10 to the power of negative 4 newtons. Okay, so we now know the magnitude. Let's determine the direction of that force. So to determine the direction of the uh, force on wire 2 by being in field 1's field, uh, we're going to use the right hand palm rule. So here I've got a picture of a hand, so you have to drop your pencil and try it along as I should explain it here. Your thumb should point in the direction of current 2. So we have I2 here. The field 
uh, your fingers should be pointing in the direction of B1. Now this is hard to show because this is actually directly into the page. So I'm just drawing it here kind of three-dimensionally going into the screen and then the palm will point in the direction that the force is acting. So looking at this side view here, we have current going up, feel going in, that force is going to be pulling that wire to the left. So there is a magnetic force pulling it over here in that direction. And this is the force on wire 2. Now if we were to ask what was the force acting on wire 1 due to wire 2's field, because remember 2 has a current and it's creating a field around that, Hopefully you might think, well, it's going to be the same magnitude, but in the opposite direction. Let me just go through a quick little proof to show you that. So here are my two wires with current 1 going up in blue here and current 2 in green going up. If you use the right-hand rule to determine the magnetic field around wire 2, it would go, uh, your thumb would point in the direction of the current and your fingers will curl in the direction of the field. So you can see it would coming, be going around in this direction. Oh, let me use a green color here. There we go. So I can have the fields being the same color as the current here. So this is the field produced by wire 2. So on the left side of wire 2, it would be coming out of the screen and on the right side it would be going into the screen as shown. The magnetic field at the location of where wire 1 would be would be given by B2 equals mu naught I2 all over 2 pi R. So it's very similar to the earlier expression except I have current 2 now. The force that would be exerted on wire 1 would be given by I1 times L then multiply by B2. And the angle, once again, will be 90 degrees because I would have current going up and feel coming straight out of the page. So this would be sine of 90. And I can substitute in this magnetic field expression and I get I1L and then times mu naught I2 all over 2 pi R. And if you look on the left side and you look on the right side, you should notice that these two expressions, if you just rearrange this one, you would end up with the same thing. So really the force that acts on wire 1 is exactly the same as the force that acts on wire 2. And then to determine the direction of the force acting on wire 1, your fingers, which re relate in the direction of the magnetic field, must point out of the screen your thumb must point straight up towards the top of the screen and you'll see that your palm will face to the right. And this would be the force of acting on wire 1. This force is of equal magnitude as force 2. It would just be in the opposite direction. So we know that if the two wires have current carrying in the same direction, then we know that force that is pulling them together. So that is an attractive force. So I'll simply put in brackets the attractive force here. And so that was what we just solved for is really part B. Now if we were to do part A, if they were moving in opposite direction, let's say I1 was going up and I2 was going down. So there's my new diagram with current going up here and current going down here. Now we're going to use the right-hand rule once again to find the magnetic field around current carrying wire 1. Now remember the thumb points in the direction of the current and the field lines will curl out of the page or out of the screen from the left side and then into the screen on the right side. So on the right side of the wire we'll draw some X's in here to show the field line from wire 1 is going into the page and over here on the left side it's going out. Now the magnitude we realized is uh, earlier was equal to mu naught times I1 all over 2 pi R, and R is this distance between the two wires. So it's really going to come out to be exactly the same magnitude you'll see in a second. The force on wire 2 will be the current of wire 2 times the length that we're looking at L times the magnetic field B1 times the sine of the angle between the field that is going straight into the page and the current that is going straight down. And that's a 90 degree angle. That cancels out to be 1. So the force on wire 2 will be exactly the same expression we had before. I2L mu naught 
I1 all over 2 pi r. We'll be substituting the same data and you'll get exactly the same amount of force. It'll be 4.85 times 10 to the power of negative 4 newtons. However, the direction will be different. You see now on the right side, we still have field going into the page, but our thumb is no longer going to be pointing upwards, it's going to be pointing downwards. So drop your pencil, put your fingers into the page, then orient your thumb so it points down, and you'll see that your right hand will have to, uh, the palm of it will be pulling it outwards. So once again, with your fingers into the page, your thumb pointing down, that force, or the palm, will be facing to the right. So that means there's a force to the right on wire 2. And of course, I could have went through the same argument that I went through earlier and say, let's look at the field produced by wire 2 and then how it interacts with wire 1's current. And we would see that the force acting on wire 1 would have a force equal and opposite, but it would be going to the left. And so we see that these two forces are basically repulsive. So to summarize, when you have two wires with the currents moving in the same direction, the forces are attractive. And when you have two wires that are moving in opposite direction for currents parallel to one another, you're going to have repulsive forces. And the forces on each of the wires will be exactly the same magnitude, but in opposite direction. Just think of Newton's third law. And just a little side note, it's important to realize that this problem um, is really the fundamental connection that we have for the definition of the ampere. So really, when we define ampere, which is a one of the fundamental SI units, is based on the interaction of two long parallel wires. So one ampere is the unvarying current, which, if present in each of the two parallel con conductors of an infinite length and one meter apart in empty space causes exactly a force of 2 to the power of negative 7 newtons per meter of length on each conductor. And that's known as Ampere's Law. That's not really part of the Physics B curriculum, but I thought I should just throw it in. Okay, and that's it for this example.